If you're looking to improve your goal swing, then you must have a good follow through position. By improving your follow through, you're gonna see instant results that are gonna massively improve your consistency and ball striking. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. Well, we're gonna start this video off by looking at the body motion. And we're gonna split this up into different categories. So the first category we're gonna be talking about is weight. Where should your weight be? Well, if you look at a lot of the top professionals out there, by the time they get into this follow through position, their weight is on their left leg leg it's on their lead leg now it's not a hundred percent fully there otherwise they'd be like this it's about 90 percent on their lead leg now this is going to massively benefit you in terms of achieving a ball and then ground contact the reason for this is because our mass determines where we are going to hit the ground it plays a huge role now if you're that golfer which i see every single day on the lesson tee who's hanging back your low point is going to be back so by simply focusing on the cue of having your weight on your left leg on the way through is going to have huge huge benefits to your swing but i'm going to add in a tiny detail that is also going to just transform your rotation now what is it that i see so many golfers do if i bring in the downline view i'll see this as they swing they'll swing all the way through and then they'll sort of fall forwards this way now here's the detail is as we are shifting our weight and we start to push out of the ground with our lead foot you'll see a lot of top tour pros finish like this where their sort of toe of their left foot is off the ground this is because as they push out of the ground not only do they have a lot of weight in their left leg it's also more towards the heel so a great cue if you're somebody who struggles with your weight shift is to go right as i finish my swing i want to feel like i've got more pressure in my left leg a lot of pressure in my left leg but it's in the heel of the left leg it's not in the toes but if you have that small little cue it's going to massively help you with weight transfer which is going to achieve that ball and then ground contact now let's give you a really simple draw that's going to help you with this weight transfer so by far one of my favorite drills is the basket drill now there's two variations of this that's going to massively help you so the first variation i tend to find golfers enjoy the most and it's called an avoidance drill so what you're going to do is you're going to set up to this golf ball right here now as you set up to this golf ball, you are gonna place that basket as close as you can to the edge of your trail heels, the outer edge. Now, here's the thing. You should be able to make a swing where you swing all the way through and you do not touch that basket. If at any point that heel touches the basket, chances are you've either spun out or you've kept your weight back on your heel too much, on your trail foot too much. So by simply setting up to this golf ball, bringing this basket in, the closer you bring it in, the harder this drill is gonna be, but you should be able to make a swing, I'll do one in a second, where you can swing all the way through and not touch that basket. If you do that, that's gonna ensure that you're shifting your weight towards your lead foot. And again, if you want that added little uh, sort of swing thought to get that good rotation, finish with your weight more in your left heel that's going to be a crucial element of this so let me hit this one for you here so as you can see all the way through i've got my toe up slightly and i didn't touch the basket that's going to help me with that great weight transfer so the second variation is still using a basket this time we're going to focus more on the lead leg and again we have right-sided dominant players who will benefit more from the drill i've just shown you we have left-sided dominant players who will benefit from this version so this is just personalizing it down to your swing now i'm going to place this basket just outside the lead leg and you can see it's about a hand width away now if i go to the top of the back swing and i swing down and i spin out and my trail heel goes that way you can see i didn't touch the basket there so my swing thought is i want to knock that basket on the way down i want to get to the top as i push into my left leg you can see i've knocked the basket the more force you put into knocking that basket with your legs the more you'll be starting the the swing with your lower body in the downswing and the better that weight transfer is going to be again that bonus tip feel like you finish with a little bit extra weight in the in the heel as you do this so set up there it's about a hand width outside let's see if i can touch that basket get a good weight transfer as you can see i actually knocked the basket over so again that's a great indicator that i got a lot of force into that left leg that's going to help me get my weight on the left side and from there that's going to put me in the first position to where i can finish in this nice balanced spot so that's the weight transfer covered now let's move into the second part which is extension plus side bend so first of all what are these two movements well extension very simply if i was just to stand in this forward bend position and i was to go into extension i would be doing this motion you can see my hips are pushing 
looking in front of me, my chest is sort of backing up so it's pointing more to the sky. That is extension. Now, side bend is simply for right-handed golfer in the downswing, dropping the right shoulder down. Now, if I do a weight shift, an extension move with a little bit of side bend, you are gonna see that as I do this, there's the weight shift. Now I'm gonna go into side bend with a little bit of extension. You can see how that gets me into a phenomenal downswing position. So if you're somebody who slices it, hooks it, you know, hits it fat, uh, inconsistent ball striking, all of these movements can be very much fixed uh, by you moving into just this good follow through position. It's gonna solve so many of your issues. For golfers who slice it, you'll often see they'll swing over the top, their chest will leave their, uh, lead their pelvis and the shoulders will finish very very level especially with driver not what we want to be seeing we want to be seeing that as we come through the pelvis can lead the chest point slightly to the sky and we have a little bit of tilt to the shoulders now how can we actually train this well i have two phenomenal drills that are going to help you with this so let's jump into the first one so the first one is an alignment stick drag through drill this is one of my all-time favorite drills so all you can do is grab an alignment stick now alignment sticks actually come in different sort of circumferences the thicker the alignment stick the more resistance you're going to have um, and arguably the better this drill is going to be so this is kind of a, a skinny alignment stick it's not going to be as great so try and get a thicker one if you can so Grip it all the way at the top of the club, bring it in front of you, and then bring it so it's in line with your toes, your trail toe right there. Now, from this position, push into your left leg, so this is representing your weight shift. Now, from there, just gently drag this club through as close to your toes as possible, and all the way through into a nice follow-through position. What you can see here is the pelvis is tucked under, and the chest is pointing up to the sky. So do that a couple of times like so. Now, what this is also going to help you do is it's going to help you find what position is realistic to you. Now, I have looked at my analytics. I know my audience is of an older generation. So we have to be realistic here. We have to factor in your flexibility. As long as you are not leaning towards the target, and if you're in a straight line, that is absolutely fine. Some players, like myself, I'm 26, I've got good flexibility. I'm gonna have my thoracic extension a little bit more this way, so my chest is gonna be able to point to the sky. But if I'm telling you, and you're a 75 year old golfer, it's not realistic. So please, please, please use this drill as a way of finding out how much extension is actually possible for your swing. By doing this drill, if you finish like this and you're pretty much just straight up, that is perfect. That is what I want you to achieve. If you do this and you finish like this, where you've got a little bit more extension, chest is more to the sky, pelvis is really tucked under, then absolutely fine. That is your position. So do that a couple times. Once you've sort of gotten used to that, again, you can link in the pressure being in the heel. You can link everything together. Then it's time to grab a club. Now, once you grab that club, we are not gonna go straight into hitting shots yet. We're actually gonna do what I call drag through drills with a golf club. So if you're an ice hockey player, you're gonna love this. So set up in this position and then just sort of recreate what a good impact position will feel like. Now from there, imagine there's a golf ball there and you're just gonna drag it through into a nice follow through position. So what we're doing here is we're taking out any momentum, any downswing positions. We're just getting used to this feeling right here. And you can see as I'm doing this, I'm in this good extension position. My trail shoulder is slightly lower than my lead shoulder. If I actually go in with a golf ball now and I try and do that, so preset impact, drag it through into that good position. Now the next stage is then to actually hit sort of some three quarter half shots, which I'll show you what that looks like right now. So let's now show you what a half swing would look like. So again, it's gonna be a half swing, back swing, full swing all the way through. I wanna hold my follow through for at least two seconds to ensure that I'm in good balance right here. So now let's go into the final part, which is actually my favorite part of all of this. And this is something that you will see the best players in the world use all the time to manage their ball flight, manage their game. And it's understanding the release, how we change certain aspects of it uh, in order to develop different shot shapes and help fix things out on the golf course. So from the downline view, as a standard, a neutral exit would be something that runs roughly through the left armpit. So hopefully that's running through the left armpit right there. That's going to encourage a relatively neutral plane. Now, if I go into this follow through position, so where the club first X is right here, and I lower it down this way, you can now see it sort of through the mid rib cage, hopefully from the downline view. 
The more I go below my left armpit, the more I'm going to be encouraging an out to in path. The more I go above my left armpit, more sort of through my shoulder, the more I'm going to be encouraging an in to out path. So let's use golfer A, we're gonna call him Brian. We're going to call him Brian. Brian struggles with a slice. He's been struggling with a slice for ages and we need to out on a golf course give him a very manageable swing thought just to help him get round, just to help him sort of solidify this down and just manage his game. So Brian when you look at his swing normally finishes very low very left this way. So what I'm going to get Brian to do is take his right hand off the club, get him to grip right above sort of his, his elbow area, so kind of on his tricep, and do some swings where he feels that club exit nice and high. Now for Brian, it's going to feel like it exits more sort of through uh, your trap muscle. In reality, it might not be that high, but you can see as he does this, he's going to learn what it feels like to have that club sort of drop in the downswing and then finish nice and high. It's going to teach him two things. Number one, it's going to teach him how to swing a little bit more in to out, and number two, as he does this, this with his trail hand off the club, he can actually feel what it feels like to release that club. Now, as Brian then does some practice swings, I'm going to get him to feel like he drops the club down and then feel like he finishes in that nice high follow through position, allow those wrists to pass over in order to help him fix his slice. So as he then goes out on the golf course, he can then go right, feel like the club drops, nice high follow through position, keep the wrist nice and relaxed right there. Then he hits his shot. And you can see that's produced, a, I mean, in that situation, that's probably what, like a 15 yard draw. Again, if Brian is a golfer who is slicing the golf ball, he can use that simple little fix to manage his game. And that is often what golf is about. It's not about perfecting it out on the golf course. It's about managing your game. So by using that simple thought of exiting higher, he was able to shift his path into out, release it more. From there, he reduced the amount his golf ball was slicing. So let's use a second example. We're gonna call this this goal for Clive. Now Clive suffers from a massive hook. Now if we use those same principles, the left sort of armpit is neutral, anything above it is going to be a draw, anything below it is going to be more of a fade. Now when we look at Clive's swing, we are going to see that his follow through gets very, very high and that's not what we want to be seeing if he is hooking the golf ball. So as a simple on course fix, we want to go right Clive, we're going to do some swings where we're going to feel like we can finish that club a little bit lower, a little bit more left. Now in this situation, I'm going to get him to do some right-handed swings. I'm going to get him to go to the top, feel like as he comes through, he can turn, get that club really exiting, sort of feel like it's through his rib cage more, a lot lower. This is going to teach him what it feels like to get more of an out to in swing, helping him fix his hook shot. So then from there, he does some little rehearsal swings, feel like it finishes more low and left. Then he jumps into the shot, he hits his shot, and as we go, that way you can see that was a lot lower, a lot more left, ball worked left to right. I didn't change anything to do with my setup. All I did was change my follow through feel and that produced one shot that curved 15 yards right to left. That one probably curved about eight yards left to right. Now, if you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and subscribe. If you need more one-to-one -one help with your game offer, online coaching on the Skillless platform, the link is down below.